I can't believe I'm sharing this. <laughs> so when quarantine started back on March 19th here in San Francisco, my little brain decided that I wasn't going to shave my legs until quarantine ended. It has been a journey that I have not spoken about, but now we're going to. <laughs> As things start to open back up, I have had to reflect on my beauty choices and my body hair. And specifically, I feel like quarantine has taught us a lot about the psychology of beauty, what makes us feel beautiful, what society expects of us, and do you know how skincare and body care really is self-care? And I also realized how much freaking time women spend shaving just shaving your legs or shaving your armpits in the shower. So today I want to share with you the tragic decision to not shave my leg hair and I wanted to shave it here with you <laughs> as well as test out a very popular IPL device that the entire internet is freaking out about. And I felt like this is a perfect time to track the regrowth of my hair, actually compare before and after of one leg to another. Um, so this is going to be a brutally honest review of the Kenzie as well. And a discussion on who this is for, what intense pulse light therapy is, what laser therapy is, and of course, the science behind your skin, specifically the skin and hair on your legs, and how this all plays into your beauty. I can't believe I caught that. Wow. <laughs> As mentioned, Kenzie is partnering with us on this video, and this is going to be one of the most brutally honest reviews, because I'm showing you one leg with, one leg without, tracking the hair growth and the hair sparsity, while really digging into what is IPL versus a laser, who is this right for, does it work, and if it does, how well. So as mentioned, I did not know how long quarantine would last, and my legs are a bit of a tragedy right now. I can't believe I'm sharing this with you, like I'm a little stress sweaty, but here we go. <laughs> when you first look at my feet and my legs, you're like, oh, there's a nice man. And then as you pan up, you're like, what? How is that attached to a female? And then you have to check yourself and be like, wow, what have gender stereotypes taught us about what we're supposed to look like? And then really, after I look down every single day when I'm taking a shower, I have to look back up at my face in the mirror and be like, okay, Cassandra, what do you actually want? What makes you feel best about your appearance and your body? <laughs> um, it's been an adventure, thankfully, because of quarantine, nobody sees it. And if I leave my house, I'm usually wearing scrubs or long pants, and so nobody can see it. So I haven't noticed any social stigma or social backlash, but I'm ready to shave them off and see what's going on. When using an IPL device, you do have to shave your leg hair, don't wax. So let's shave these beasts. <laughs> shave these beasts and um, see what's going on. They don't even look like my legs. <laughs> let's shave them. And you know what? I'm so silly. I forgot shaving cream because I didn't realize that I would need it. We have man shaving cream, I think. We do. I also, you can kind of use conditioner and just double up. Look at this. I could probably draw pictures with it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to use some conditioner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it looks like hair on someone's head. It's like, so it looks straight. like someone who's balding. Sleep. Oh, well, well, oops. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't think this through. Am I gonna need multiple razors? Kind of seems that way. Oh. Okay. I think we oh better get gosh. the weed whacker before we... <laughs> Oh my god, look at this one wow. smooth patch. Wow, that's so aesthetically pleasing. Okay. Why is hair on the body like not absolutely horrible, but like the second you remove it from your body, it's like dirty and nasty? You know, I've never understood that. I don't like, you know, people freak out when there's like a, a stray hair that's not attached to someone's head. Right? I never got that. I'm like, why is... Ew. <gasps> ew. You Julia, I feel like the razor's becoming dull. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> Look at this before and after. What a nice before and after. Wow, that line. That line of demarcation. Before YouTube, after YouTube. <laughs> yeah, dude, for the gram, you just shave this side of your leg and this side of your leg and the other side is still all hairy. So you can take a shot like this. Right. We, we can't. Oh my god, let's do that. Oh my god, you are a genius. You know what I forgot? Hmm. I forgot how much um, shaving shows off your scars. Smooth. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why is it so gross? Why 
once it leaves the human the body. Sun. Started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> you know, how long do women spend shaving? Like, out of your life? Think about how many times a week you would just shave your armpits, like just touch it up. Think of how many days and years that translates into us sitting in a shower, running water, just to shave our legs. Half and half action. <laughs> Yum. Wow. Dude, this is like 18 armpits on one yeah. half of a leg. You probably have a whole head's worth of hair. Rule of nines with burn victims. Ain't got nothing on my leg here. Gonna singe this hair before I singe that skin. <laughs> I'm gonna giggle like I know what that means. Oh, it's okay. Um, basically, I'll just tell you. Um, when you are burned by fire or other hot objects or electrical burns, Love that. we measure the burns by rule of nines. Okay. You can also use the rule of palms, but rule of nines is slightly more accurate. It's just a quick way to assess damage before skin grafts. Oh, very good. Oh, I feel like this just took an entire razor in and of itself. Yeah, I this should... razor isn't going to make it past its maiden voyage. It's kind of satisfying. Here, ready? Mm-hmm. Nope. Is this ASMR? Are we doing ASMR? This is someone's ASMR. It's like freaking trying to cut through timber. Look at that. It's just <sighs> not even... Deforestation. Ugh. You're wiping out an ecosystem right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that shaving is technically a form of exfoliation? I guess it sure is, huh? Yeah. Isn't that cray-cray? Smooth... Ow! That <laughs> You're right, I haven't ridden a motorcycle with smooth legs. It's gonna feel weird. <gasps> Whoa, I'm not gonna feel the breeze. <laughs> Here are my brand new legs that I've had for 27 years, but they feel brand new. And look at all this hair. They look brand new. I'm like an ice rink all in my own, okay. <laughs> Gotten ourselves into a hairy situation. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, thank you for watching me remove the dead keratin from my lower extremities. It's been a pleasure. Cassandra shaves the day. <laughs> <laughs> so the science of IPL and why this is not a laser. What are lasers? What is intense pulse light? And what is even waxing and shaving? And what about things like epilators and these other hair devices? How do they all play in together? Well, I've actually used other hair devices in the past that you can't buy anymore because the companies don't exist anymore because the brands suck so bad. There was specifically one from Sephora that I would use that burnt off my hair. It didn't work. I still have hairy arms and all it did was make my entire house smell like burning hair. I've also used epilators, which basically grab onto and pull hair out. Those are very painful, and it's basically like tweezing or waxing. You're just using a device to do it. IPL and laser are where the actual science and technology comes in. These have been proven in medicine to work, but they do work differently. You see, IPL stands for intense pulsed light. This is a spectrum of light that basically goes into the skin and targets color. Here's an inside look to your skin, and as you can see, each hair is kind of growing out out from a little area right here. This is called the papilla, and you see this hair, the reason it's able to grow is because it gets blood and nutrients from the rest of the body. Well, this little papilla right here is that kind of area at the bottom where all of this starts. So if you can use intense pulse light or a laser, shoot this into the skin and have it go into here, target this dark little black area, it can actually kill it, meaning there's no way for blood or nutrients to get there and no new hair will grow. There are many different types of lasers on the market as well, and lasers do work in a similar way. Again, they're targeting specific depths in the skin to cause damage to specific areas of the anatomy to stop the hair from growing. However, with a laser, this is much more targeted. There is just a specific wavelength, whereas with intense pulse light, this is a spectrum of light. You can kind of think of the difference between IPL and a laser as like a flashlight versus a laser pointer. A flashlight has more of a wide spectrum of colors. It's a little bit less focused, right? Whereas something like a laser is super, super Super direct and you can really pinpoint exactly where you're going and this is only one color a specific wavelength that only shows up as one color of light remember we do have this electromagnetic spectrum and what we can see is only such a small portion of what there actually is what we see is visible light and there's everything over here from UVA and UVB rays x-rays and gamma rays all the way over here to infrared which is heat or things like radio waves or microwaves so with IPL you're targeting a broader spectrum whereas with laser you're getting super super specific 
specific. But there's also different strengths. For instance, what we use in dermatology clinics or in professional settings have much higher power settings. Essentially, this is measured in joules and in energy, and you're able to actually adjust those machines to be more powerful or even to target how deep you go into the skin. Whereas something like this, although it can still be powerful, it's made for at-home use. So it's made to be safe at home and it's made to target a specific thing, which would be contrast inside of your skin to target the bulbs of the hair to get rid of them. This is also where we have to talk about some of the limits when it comes to these at-home devices, because these do not work for all skin types. You see, this is looking for contrast. It's looking for big changes in color. So the ideal candidate for this is someone who has lighter skin and dark hair, because it's going to be really easy for the light to see that and target that darkness and get rid of it right there. If you do have light skin and light hair, there's less contrast, so this is going to be hard to use. And unfortunately, if you have dark skin and dark hair, this won't be able to seek that out either. The Kenzie box that I got specifically states on the back which skin types it works for, and it looks like Fitzpatrick type six would not be a candidate, because again, there isn't that contrast. If you do have dark skin and dark hair, however, you know, what we use in office, there are Alexandrite lasers or there are YAG lasers. These both work on darker skin tones because they don't have that limit of contrast. But also, that's what's different about having an in-office procedure that's done by a dermatologist or a trained expert or a laser technician, as opposed to some of these things that you can get at home. That is really frustrating. I know that when I was researching this video, I found out that Kenzie is looking for radio frequency options. Uh, radio frequency is something that we do for skin, but it can be used on other areas of the body as well. It looks like they're looking into that for darker skin, but at this time, if you do have darker skin, this is not going to be for you, and you should look at Jaeger Alexandrite. That's what I would recommend. Again, if you can see the hair on your leg, meaning if you can see the difference in color between your skin tone and your leg hair, that is who this device is going to be best for. Now, there are a few other people who should not use these devices, and let's talk about that. You should not use this device if you're not a candidate because you won't get results, but if you are prone to keloid scarring, you also shouldn't use this. Keloids are type of scars that are really raised and knotted. They can happen because of genetic predispositions or because of obviously wounds to the skin, but sometimes light can wound the skin, which stimulates healing, but unfortunately, if your body is prone to keloids, you might keloid instead of heal. Also, if you're on certain medications, you should not use this, specifically if you're on blood thinners like Coumadin or Warfarin, um, if you're on heparin, basically any blood thinner, I would not use this just in case some damage happens to those capillaries under the skin. Make sure that you get cleared by your doctor if you're on a blood thinner, and even if you're on medications that make you photosensitive or light sensitive. In acne and in dermatology, things that are commonly prescribed are things like minocycline, doxycycline, or tetracycline. If you're on any of these medications, they can make your skin more sensitive to light. So obviously this is IPL, intense pulse light. You don't wanna be using this therapy on your skin if you're on those medications that make you light sensitive. Also, if you are tanning, First off, please stop tanning. I really hope you're not tanning, but if you are artificial tanning, if you're someone who goes to tanning beds, you should not use this. I know that Kenzie doesn't specifically say that on their packaging, and it's because they are not a medical device. However, as someone who has history in medical settings, I want to make sure that I'm giving you accurate information so that you can really prepare yourself and make sure that you are looking at treatments that are actually going to work for you and not harm you or put you in any sort of place that could give you less than desirable results. Now that being said, if you are a candidate, the ideal candidate is somebody who has a skin color that is different than their hair color on the area that they're looking at doing. It's somebody who is not on blood thinners or any photosensitizing medications or they've been cleared by their doctor and someone that even if they scar, they don't turn into keloid scars. And if that's you, not only are these at-home devices helpful, but there are other uses of IPL or intense pulse light that have been shown in medicine to be helpful for the skin overall. Let's specifically talk about that because I think it is interesting. You know, you go in to get some hair off your legs, your underarms or whatever, but you might actually be getting collagen boosting benefits or color correction within your skin as well. And in medical offices, this is often done on the face. We use this for capillary conditions. We use this for some pigmentation disorders. And these treatments can be really, really effective. On the medical side, these light therapies can be used for so many different things, um, from pigmentation to actually helping from sun damage. So if you were somebody that tanned and doesn't anymore, you can start to try to work on some of that sun damage with these therapies. It's helpful for redness, it's helpful for some vascular conditions such as removing spider veins, and it is helpful for acne, which you know is one of my personal favorites. That's what I'm most versed in. Now that being said, this is the Kenzie. This is an at-home device. I don't think that you're going to get the same results as you do in office. However, this is probably going 
going to be way less expensive. And because it's using the same technology or similar technology, is this also something that could provide benefits? I know that Kenzie does show that you can use this on certain areas of the face if you have really dark like chin hairs. Um, that's not personally what I'm doing, but I would actually be interested if anybody has done that and if they have seen results. Did you see a reduction in acne as well? Did you see any redness removal or pigmentation removal? Because I'd be very interested to know. But that being said, I don't want someone getting all excited and buying this and trying to use it for off-label purposes and then being disappointed with the results. This is said to be used for hair removal and that is what I am testing it for. The other thing is that you have to consider the price of in-office treatments. Um, at the places that I have worked or that I am familiar with, I, again, I'm in San Francisco, and, and this is going to depend on your location and the provider that you're seeing, but at the very cheapest, it's like $700 per treatment, but that can go up to $1,400 to $1,500 per treatment. That's what I'm used to. And you do normally need between six and 12 treatments to see results and to see lasting results. And dermatology offices, practitioners clinics, and even some of those laser centers do normally sell packages, which make them a little bit less expensive. But again, that still breaks down to like, what, $700? to 950 per treatment, um, and it is very expensive to do in office. Things like this online do retail for a couple hundred dollars. This one is specifically 230. Um, there is a discount coupon that you're able to get it for like 180 or $190 for. I do think that that is a better price if you're already interested or looking at laser. Um, this costs a fraction of that, so why not try it first and see if it works? If, However, if you are working with a dermatologist or with a professional on some of these other problems, such as vascular conditions, such as hair removal with some of these special cases like darker skin or keloid scarring. Um, I wish I had a better budget idea for you, but I really don't. So let's start these treatments. It does come with an extra long cord, so you can plug this in while you're flashing away. You do have to use this on shaved legs. You cannot wax your legs and then do this, because remember, with waxing, we're removing this entire hair and the bulb. But this light is trying to target the bulb so it can like kill it and get rid of it. So you wanna make sure to shave the hair so that that way the light targets that pigment and can actually go in. So now that my legs are shaved, Let's do this. Plug it in, I have my little light on. Ooh, we got different settings. I wanna fry my leg hairs. So because we shaved and not waxed, it's going to look for the melanin, the little pigment in there. Um, and then it's gonna shoot this intense pulse light and theoretically kill the papilla so that my hair doesn't grow back. I'm only doing this leg and then we're gonna just stack it against this one, you ready? All right. I mean, I'm just gonna kind of go for the middle. Whoa, there we go. And I guess it won't flash unless oh. it has a full seal. Okay, close your eyes, ready? Did it do it? I feel like it didn't do it. No, it's not doing it. Didn't. It didn't, I don't <gasps> think anything happened. It knows. I feel like everyone who I've watched did it on both legs and then it was kind of hard to track the before and after. Cause like, I trust people, but I don't see their before and after when they are the ones looking at it. Where it's like, I can actually see who be, who be hairy and who be, who be smooth, you know? What did you do this weekend? <laughs> oh, not much. Just helped my friend shave her manly ass legs to the point that she got some nicks, cleaned a whole bathroom. It was a good time. Good time. We had a blast doing it. It was a suave afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to raise her joke standards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Hilarious. <laughs> I was shaving the best for last. In light of everything that's happened today, I feel like this is going pretty smooth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that you're pressing my buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I, f I feel like I've Kenzied this leg pretty darn well. I think so. Let's get a juxtaposition and see if we can see a difference. I don't see a difference. <laughs> we also just shaved them though. Ooh, look at that calf, girl. Ooh, look at that calf. Look at Whoa. that calf. Look at that calf. That Kenzie is that calf. <laughs> chiseled by the gods. Kenzie that calf. <laughs> <laughs> it's not unbearable. I'm looking down and I'm like expecting it to be all red. The pain means it's working. <laughs> Beauty is pain! Exactly! Well, we shall check back. 
we have kenzie this side we have not kenzie this side and um i'm gonna just do this for like a month and a half i need a pedicure but there is no place to get a pedicure still man legs but at least we can seed. It does not hurt as bad <laughs> as some of the ones in office. This is definitely because of the jewels or the power and what's actually being put into the skin. Um, it pinches a little bit, even maybe like a hairband kind of snapping on your skin. That's what it feels like. Again, in office, depending on the pain tolerance of the patient, we do have topical anesthetics such as numbing creams. And depending on the device and the modality that you're using, there are some that we use ultrasound gel for to give us a little bit of slip across the skin. But for this, you do not need to use any sort of gel, any sort of cream. You don't need a numbing cream. And ideally, you should use this on dry clean shaved skin so it's only been like a little over 24 hours maybe 30 hours since it's a little bit in the afternoon look at this i've already got stubble in one day come on <laughs> and um so far there's not any difference between the one that you know has been kenzied once and hasn't so it's what we're living with. So this is the leg hair situation. This is the one that has not been kenzied. This is the one that has. I feel like they're pretty comparable. And again, it's only been six days and two treatments. I know you're supposed to do it once a week. I did it like twice. Um, I definitely have some on the inside here. I can't tell whether or not one is growing back more. As you can see, this one, the hairs kind of curl. I feel like they got fried a little bit more. Whereas this one, the hairs are more straight and I feel like they're just healthier. So let's compare the outside of this leg to the outside of this leg. Also, if you notice, uh, I've been picking. That is my fault. Uh, but overall, this is pretty much how we're doing. So let's go shave these off so that we can kind of start fresh, which is how we're supposed to. The other thing is that I am wearing protective safety glasses. I have these from work, and if I have them, why wouldn't I use them just to kind of be extra safe and keep my eyes protected? Kenzie specifically says that you do not need to use goggles. The reason why is because this little window gets completely pressed to your skin when it flashes, and that's supposed to make it so that no damaging rays get to your eyes. But in clinic, whenever we're doing this on a patient or client, or whenever the client or patient is receiving it, we're wearing eye protection, they are wearing eye protection. It's better to be safe than sorry. I know that you see me wearing them. Don't think that you have to go buy glasses in order to use this. You definitely don't. This is just something that I have and I'd rather be safe than sorry. Okay, so I'm Kenzieing my leg and look, look what happened. Turn this off. It's not super painful, like I'm okay. Um, but it actually looks like it's really targeting and killing those little hair follicles. This is like normal. Some people get red after these kind of treatments, after laser, after other procedures. It all just depends on your skin. I have erythema, which means that if I touch my face just a little bit, it gets super, super red. So this is probably pretty normal for me, but we'll keep monitoring it. Hopefully this means it's working. <laughs> I just finished. Kenzieing my legs and obnoxiously posting about it on Instagram. And here's the problem. I can't tell whether or not one leg is growing back thicker than the other. And yes, I'm wearing pants. It just doesn't look like it. When I do look closely, these hairs do look more bent. Like you see how they're just curved. Um, this is what this leg looks like and it doesn't have any of the redness. And you can see, you know, the hairs are not like roughed up. And then on this side, you can definitely see where the light has hit. And then you can see how those legs are sticking up. This redness does go away within a couple of hours, which is nice, but it's obvious that this is where the light is pinpointing the darkness on there. And this is basically what our update is right now. At first, I wasn't noticing a difference. Sorry, I have a bruise here but I feel like this leg is growing back a little bit more sparse in certain areas. Am I tripping or do you see it? I found the hold down and constantly shoot button. <laughs> It's another day of me just blasting my leg hairs to smithereens, and I just shaved them this morning. Take a look at this before and after. 
I'm actually quite surprised. But when you take a look, I feel like this leg is actually growing hair back more sparse. Don't be disillusioned. It's not completely gone. There's still little pieces that it's growing back. But I feel like when I compare them, I see a lot more of the hair is poking through and faster on this edge versus on this side. If you actually see, I always get razor bumps. This is something I forgot how much I hated, but I always get like these razor burn and these razor bumps. You know, I have been getting little bumps on this side as well, and I have been picking at them full transparency, but I feel like less of them are growing back. This is healing up nicely. <laughs> Here it is on this side. I feel like I am actually starting to see a difference, which I didn't think I was in the very beginning. We shall check back in after a few more flashes and a few more weeks. <laughs> so when it's all said and moisturized, what do my legs look like? Actually not moisturized, SPF'd. Because you should put SPF on after doing some of these light treatments, especially if you're gonna go outside. But you should be using SPF anyways. Well, hello, my half hairless friends. Let's talk about how this went, what my legs look like, and what we've learned. Let's take a look at these legs. So here are my legs. Again, sorry about the bruise. I actually feel like I'm starting to see a difference. I still have hair growth. Um, I still have ingrowns because, you know, that's a normal part of shaving my legs, I guess. But I feel like the hair, especially down here, is just way thicker than the hair over here. There's a side-by-side -side comparison. For almost the first six to eight treatments, I didn't actually think I was really seeing anything. I was like, the hairs are a little bit bent upwards, but I don't really see a difference. And around that, you know, six, seven, eight mark, I actually noticed that the hair started growing back slower. And now when I look at my legs, I actually see them growing back sparser on the one that I did Kenzie. I also see a lot of ingrown hairs, which is frustrating. This is something I've always dealt with when shaving, and I forgot how flippin' frustrating that is. Unfortunately, it looks like, you know, because I have to shave before doing the Kenzie, I'm still getting ingrowns on both legs. Over time, if my leg becomes completely hairless, will this stop? Maybe, um, but I have to continue using it in order to find out, and I wouldn't want to tell you that it does because I do not know. I do see a visible hair reduction on this one leg, and again, at first I didn't see it, but I really do. I can also see some of the areas that I forgot. For instance, I didn't realize I wasn't always going over my kneecap or I wasn't getting, you know, really close to like my ankle or my sock line. And I can actually see where the hairs there are growing back a little bit more, you know, like a national forest. Whereas on this other leg, um, it's definitely still Yosemite on this side of the valley. <laughs> I guess one of the major questions that I have is, is this permanent? When it comes to regular IPL, uh, yes, it is permanent to semi-permanent. You still need to do touch-ups. What in-office clinics generally say is that there is a 50 to 80% hair reduction over six to eight treatments. And again, it was around that six to eight treatment that I actually started seeing results. That being said, you know, if I were doing this in an office, I would still have to go back for touch-ups. Whereas with this, you know, it was, what, $230 on sale for $179. So it's like, okay, if I need to do touch-ups, at least I can do it here at home. When it comes to timing, the time was definitely saved from like having to go to a laser clinic and actually sit in the clinic, book the appointments, etc. However, is this faster than shaving? I feel like it takes about the same amount of time, if not a little bit more time to do this than to shave my legs. Cause when you shave, you know, you shave. When I'm doing this, I kind of go over them a couple times. Cause like I'm watching my YouTube videos or I'm catching up on listening to a podcast or something. And I just kind of Kenzied away this one leg as I was doing that. Definitely a time saving over traditional, um, you know, but for actual shaving, I'm like, okay, I'm spending a comparable amount of time. Again, the hope is that if I do this regularly, that my leg hairs won't grow back as quickly, meaning I won't have to shave as much in the future. And obviously they are seeming to grow back either slower or sparser. Um, I feel like I have to give this a couple months more time, but overall, at this point in my journey, the results are promising. Some of the people that I follow online who have tried this are people like Dr. Mona, um, Alana, Car Beauty, um, Susan Yara, people like that. And I feel like they have seen more long lasting results, but my body different. 
so I don't actually know until time tells. I do understand that most results are seen over 12 weeks and that I haven't had that amount of time to test this out. I do plan to continue with this and to do little updates like on Instagram or on Snapchat if you are interested in seeing me continue just this one leg because I'm genuinely curious to see what happens. But overall, who is this good for and who is this worth it for? I would say if you're someone who has ever considered laser, this is kind of obvious. It's like, okay, this is half the price of one laser appointment treatment. You have to actually use it. You have to actually stick with it and commit to it. But if you're thinking of doing laser anyways, why wouldn't you try this first and just see how it goes? If you've never considered laser before, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, if you're someone that, like me, is a little bit frustrated with the shaving thing and, you know, you don't want to get waxed regularly or you're just interested in your hair removal options, again, if this can remove my leg hairs, that is great. Uh, even if it just makes them grow back slower, that extends the time that I have between needing to shave. And, you know, for me, who's generally busy and doesn't like to spend my Friday afternoons shaving my legs in the shower, um, that's actually a really alluring prospect to me. I I think one of the major things to remember is that if you don't use it, it doesn't work. It's kind of like skincare or anything else that you try. There are people that try these things that don't stick with them and they don't see the results. And that's the same with in-office clinic procedures. People buy the six to eight pack, but they don't schedule the appointments and the office makes a ton of money, but the people don't actually see results because they don't stick with it. And again, I kind of go back to if you've ever considered laser, um, especially if you've ever considered laser, this is a no brainer, but then for the person who has it, is it worth a try? If you have the money and don't enjoy shaving your legs, I think it's fine. Um, but if you are very proud of your body hair, then obviously this isn't for you. <laughs> I think that that $50 discount code really does make a difference. You know, if you asked me to pay $230 for this, it is a lot less than an in-office procedure, but it's still $230. Um, for $179, that is much more manageable, and that is a coupon code that I would recommend to you if you feel that this is something that would benefit your routine. The other thing that nobody else mentions that I don't hear people talking about, um, but there is a money-back guarantee, which as a consumer makes me feel a little bit more protected. Um, it looks like the restrictions are pretty strict. They want you to take before and after photos. They want to make sure that you're actually using the device. Um, but it is nice to know that if you actually photograph your progress, which you should be doing anyways to actually see, you know, if your brain is playing tricks on you and it's all placebo effect or if it's actually working, um, if you do that and if something goes wrong, they give you your money back within three months. And that right there is about 12 treatments. And again, I started to see results between six to eight. So I'm like two away, but I want to continue to the full 12. So keep your receipt take photos of your progress. And if something goes wrong, you know, you can return it. And if something doesn't go wrong, then, you know, you have potentially one leg that does not grow back hair. And you know, by like treatments three and four, I was like, yeah, were all these influencers lying? Like, is this a scam? And when I looked down at my one, you know, 60 to 80% hairless leg compared to the other one, which is a national forest, um, I'm actually pretty impressed. And the fact that they have that money back guarantee to stand by it, the fact that they told me when filming this video, be brutally honest as always, I was like, okay, you're on. <laughs> If you have tried at-home IPL, please share your experience with me. What was it like? And for those who have had in-office or like laser clinic treatments, please share your experience as well because I think it would be interesting to compare and contrast those and see which is better for who. And again, like I'm trying to think like, after experiencing this, is there any benefit to actually going to a clinic? Um, having someone else do it for you? But even if you have someone else do it for you, I don't know, it's not like you can sit there and watch YouTube videos while you do it. I don't know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Overall, I hope that you enjoyed learning about the difference between IPL and laser, as well as looking at my hairy beastie legs and going through this journey with me. Make sure that you turn that like button a different color than it already is, because I think it has changed color, but I'm not totally sure. And overall, remember to be beautiful both inside and out, regardless of whether or not your body is growing hair in those different places. I love you guys, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <sighs> Love you guys. Bye.